Good evening, everybody, and thanks for inviting me to um, FOSS Meet 2019. Uh, I am going to share with you some thoughts on uh, uh, what I do not like in uh, technology uh, development in the West and how I think that uh, open hardware and open source can uh, be a solution for that and uh, this I believe is true especially uh, outside uh, of Europe or, or of the Western countries and uh, as you can see in the next slide I have been uh, studying the topics for uh, about 10 years now both uh, independently and as board member of the Free Knowledge Institute which is an NGO in the Netherlands and uh, uh, going again to next slide uh, I want to uh, share with you an overview of some uh, very fancy things that are um, taken as granted in the first world but maybe are not so good and uh, next slide one of those things is uh, five generation mobile networks this is uh, um, a, a big uh, bootstrap right now but if you go uh, looking under the hype you see that um, this is a quote from a recent article that what they promise is not going to happen in much of the world for um, quite a few years if it will ever happen now uh, next slide the internet of things uh, five generation networks are um, marketed and as a need for the internet of things which should be should consist of literally tens of billions of gadgets as many as uh, 50 billions i believe in the next 20 or 30 years but when you uh, go look at this um, projections uh, you find uh, endless products that are uh, often useless or incompatible with each other and so very wasteful and polluting assuming that they do that that they are physically feasible in the first place because um, if you think to all the raw materials um, that should be needed for uh, these developments you cannot exclude a future in which countries fight for um, rare metals as they were have been fighting for oil in the last century and um, next slide uh, please um, uh, another uh, very uh, fancy buzzword is uh, uh, smart homes which is uh, coming uh, to Asia too that uh, article about the high-tech kitchen uh, is from the Hindu is an article in the Hindu of about one year ago but again if you look at all those products with a cold mind you find that you cannot um, avoid the conclusion that many of those gadgets are what uh, we call ruby goldberg machines that is uh, usually uselessly complicated devices to do things that were much simpler before and uh, the same if you go to the next slide uh, can be said of much of we call as uh, smart cities and um, those two 
pictures in the slide seven about smart cities are uh, e examples of how this uh, trend risks to create another big wave of uh, um, products that are uh, obsolete, uh, the, the, that are obsolete by design, or designed to lock people or uh, cities, whole cities, to single corporations for decades, as we know it has happened many times with proprietary software. Uh, public lighting as a service is um, a proposal uh, of renting light instead of buying street lamps. Basically, you, a city, rents the, the street lamp service uh, in deals that are apparently very cheap, but in fact uh, lock, can lock the city to that supplier of light for decades. And uh, we also have cases of smart meters that should monitor your electric consumption uh, to help you save money, but uh, we have cases where this is true, meaning that these devices work as advertised only uh, with uh, one vendor or one service provider. So if you want to switch provider of electricity, for example, your uh, smart meter becomes a brick, a dumb brick that is not compatible with the new provider. So basically what I am uh, trying to say is that much of what is uh, seen as the technological uh, supremacy of, uh, especially in uh, electronics, of uh, uh, certain countries is in fact but a repetition of all the lock-in and um, uh, no flexibility and no uh, freedom for users that we know very well uh, in the world of software. This is the same, uh, the same thing in the realm of material objects with the same uh, limitations and same uh, huge waste. And it, it is everywhere. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, you have surely heard of uh, smart or driverless cars, but uh, there, uh, there are already uh, many studies that show how those cars, uh, assuming that they ever become uh, uh, really compatible with ordinary roads would be uh, likely boring like hell because uh, uh, imagine being trapped as this person in slide 8 being trapped in a car where you cannot touch the wheel but you may stay awake and ready all the time in case the car fails. So it is uh, like normal driving, just less comfortable and more boring. And also the driverless cars would do almost nothing is as private means of transportation to solve traffic. The, the, the highway below in slide uh, 8, uh, at the bottom of slide 8, may very well be filled, all those cars may very well be all driverless cars. They would do nothing to save time for their owners. Really nothing. And then on slide 9, uh, I 
put an example of how these uh, uh, problems that uh, uh, we in uh, first world countries are very proud of uh, exporting worldwide uh, are not limited to high tech. Uh, the, here is a very luxurious bathroom in, uh, in slide nine. Okay, this is the uh, one of the most um, luxurious and glamorous uh, kinds of bathroom. But the the truth is is that uh, uh, as you can uh, see in next slide. This is a very, very inefficient and uh, dirty and uh, and useless, uselessly complicated design. Uh, the the meme in the left part of slide ten say uh, says uh, it well. There is this kid that cannot believe that we use for uh, human waste disposal bowls of clean water inside houses just for that purpose. That is reality. And this is what we uh, call uh, glamorous and um, and something to to look uh, to, to wish for. And that on one end and the, but in the, on the other end, uh, we have fat birds. We have this design that is clogging the pipes, the sewers in many uh, cities. And this is because we are uh, uh, still uh, locked into this uh, very um, not clean, very inefficient technology for basic human functions. We just make it look good, but it is not good. So we, what I'm saying is that many of the things that seem uh, very shiny, very advanced, and so on, uh, are uh, they come with a, a very high, uh, very bad price, which, uh, if you uh, go to next slide, uh, cannot be fixed with uh, um, the, the the current uh, hype in high tech. Uh, the, the slide, the message of the slide in rene renewable energies is that uh, all those things uh, uh, create lots of dependencies. They make countries dependent from oil, from uh, uh, many rare materials and so on. And uh, uh, this is nothing that would be solved by renewable energies because that uh, chart, which is, uh, I agree, is not very readable in the um, in the slide. Uh, that chart is uh, uh, it shows uh, how the basic materials for all the renewables technology we have today, like uh, mainly photovoltaic panels, uh, it comes from uh, uh, very few countries. So even uh, things like renewables are not in itself a solution because they they they, they can uh, free countries from uh, uh, oil dependence, for example, at the expense of introducing new lock-ins by other suppliers, assuming that we have enough materials raw materials worldwide to make all those um, wonderful things at affordable prices. Uh, much of this is just hype. It, it, does, it does not match reality. And uh, so uh, on slide, I have tried to summarize this in the uh, next slide. Uh, where I say, where I observe that, that current my three models have big limits. I hope I showed you some effective examples. What we have today as the mainstream model 
is uh, something is just an endless race where everybody loses um, in turn because uh, now we have Western nations that have lost uh, much um, manufacturing and much uh, independence uh, in manufacturing to China, but uh, this is already going to change. And we, we all uh, already have signs that, uh, as somebody says, uh, Africa may be the next China. But then uh, 10 years later, uh, some place, some other place will be the next Africa and so on. And this is not good. It's not, uh, it's, it's not something that leads to better life and lives and more freedom, in my opinion. And uh, and what is bad, in, if you see in the next slide, is how the cost, the the harm of all this model is uh, um, often or almost always actually uh, passed on to the weakest uh, people and places. We have much of the plastic um, waste. Uh, in the sea that is uh, is carried by big rivers in Asia and Africa. We have workers in um, outside Western countries who are extremely dangerous places, like the, the case of Rana Plaza uh, six years ago, um, because uh, they are doing uh, uh, cheap goods for uh, other countries without any protection. And um, in next slide, uh, this is uh, an example of uh, what I said a minute ago. Uh, this race, uh, we, we are in uh, this shiny model of uh, um, very high-tech progress, uh, faster and faster, um, more and more impressive uh, for many people ha is only uh, a race where uh, eventually nobody wins and uh, because we have to, what we have today or yesterday is people outside uh, western countries who work in uh, non-human conditions to produce goods for western countries and that was already yesterday, in a sense. Today, in the, even in Western countries, we have high tech, which is, uh, as uh, uh, shown in this uh, image of an Amazon uh, worker, a worker in an Amazon warehouse with this uh, device on her wrist, which uh, follows uh, reports where she is every second, and um, so what we have today is that uh, um, what we are already seeing in Western countries these days is that this model, which seems so good and wonderful, is already um, moving um, the um, living opportunities away from uh, other countries because what we have is that, uh, for example, in this example, fashion and consumerism are becoming so quick, so uh, more frantic every year, that many factories, many companies in uh, first world countries are bringing production back from uh, Asia or Africa or Latin America because it is the only way they have to push new products to their customers every second week, which is uh, good in one place, but it means less work in uh, developing countries, less job opportunities. And it also happens in ways that do not make robots displace people. They transform people into robots because this is what the new conditions of work are like in many places. That uh, if you are uh, not lucky, you are fired 
because a robot replaces you. If you are even less lucky, you work in conditions that make you feel worse than a robot. And this is, is not, uh, um, this is not uh, limited to that to one place. This is some, these are risks that we all uh, face in all countries, just in different moments and at an, an uh, at a faster and faster price. It is, sorry, at a faster and faster pace, I meant. And uh, going to next slide. So what what I have what have I said so far? I have tried to uh, to show how the the current economic uh, model uh, and especially in uh, production of physical objects is very much like what you surely know in the realm of software. We have monolithic uh, products developed by just a few corporations imposed on everybody else and designed to lock in people all the time uh, with uh, all sorts of promises. And um, looking at it, uh, going to the next slide, please. Look, looking at this from the point of view of um, India, Asia and their destiny, but because I am now speaking uh, to you, but it is really a global issue. It would be uh, the, the same even uh, with different words or cities, even if I were speaking to a European audience. What we have is that big cities are becoming uh, worse and worse every year for many people. And uh, much of the action for bad or for good that is going to happen um, in the next few years will happen in your countries, not in Europe or Northern America both for the bad and for the good. And uh, so you, you have uh, already voices calling for uh, um, India and, uh, and other, other nations in Africa, in Asia, in uh, everywhere outside uh, the West, stop being subservient to certain models of progress and calls for worldwide cooperation. And this is, uh, in, I mean, here today we are looking at this from the Asian side because uh, we, uh, because you are in Asia, but again, it, it, it is not, uh, I, I really hope, I really, really hope that I am not coming uh, or looking like the, the uh, yet another white man teaching everybody else in the world how to live. This is not my belief. This is not what I came to, to share with you. I am only making examples, trying to make examples that are relevant for you today, but it is really uh, about worldwide cooperation, not superiority of anybody over anybody else. Uh, so uh, let's go to the main question in the next slide, uh, which is uh, considering all those uh, um, negative sides of the current uh, model of high-tech uh, growth or progress or development or whatever you call it. What is the place of open hardware and open source, especially, but not only outside uh, Western countries? And my answer to this question, if you go to please to the next slide, uh, my answer to this question is that all countries have the same right 
to material well-being, so to uh, good uh, sanitation, uh, public transportation, uh, um, food, uh, and uh, th that is out of the question. So uh, it, it is uh, all the countries have the same rights to a decent standard of material living. So the if there is uh, waste and pollution in the world today, the solution surely is not, is not to say developing countries should not improve their conditions. Absolutely not. What I'm saying, what I believe is that each country should achieve that goal in the way that is best for itself and most compatible with its own culture, history, and conditions. And I am strongly convinced that there is no way to do this without open hardware. Because open hardware can and should be, especially in places that um, are free from uh, exactly because uh, they are in bad shape today on, on certain grounds. Uh, open hardware is the, the, can be the best way to solve those problems uh, without repeating the errors made in other countries. So um, and going to next slide, please. Uh, th there is a lot of talk about disruption of uh, telecom disruption of um, of uh, cars and uh, so on uh, my answer is uh, let's develop open hardware that solve solves uh, material uh, basic uh, problems first like toilets uh, and uh, makes the turns them into sources of wealth in uh, well, there are lots of venture capitalists in the West that are wasting mountains of money uh, trying to discover and fund the, um, the next Uber in some other market. In uh, other places, we have instead uh, much more interesting development. There is something in Senegal that they called Uber for poop, of all things. And uh, which means uh, um, setting up digital, using digital technology to um, transform all that waste into something valuable and working on it all together. And please note that I can send you the links or attach the links of everything I'm saying, uh, the sources for everything I'm saying uh, to the slides uh, when I distribute them. So you can uh, see by yourself. And uh, going to the next slide, uh, another uh, thing that uh, I really hope to, uh, to that takes off is open source home appliances. Because uh, if you look at the typical um, Western home those days, it is full of uh, fancy appliances that um, may, that do make life easier, but at a very high price because they are full of uh, uh, useless features or not repairable at all or designed to break after just a few years. And uh, instead, there, but there are also projects to to co-develop just like Linux or um, Apache or other projects like that. Today, there are also projects to co-develop open source appliances. Today, you can uh, uh, share on GitHub uh, designs of, uh, um, of fridges, for example, or microwave ovens. And that is the kind of development, of progress that is needed, in my opinion. 
because it's something that Fab Lab may um, may produce on demand, may co-develop together, may service, making money, and they could scale uh, to the huge market that is the um, uh, that consists of uh, not rich people, including very poor people, because um, yeah, a fridge or a, a toilet or some or any other um, high tech f appliance uh, that may be developed as open hardware is something that would be needed and affordable uh, if done. Uh, in uh, as open hardware even in rural villages and uh, for example and this is true also for production of energy if you uh, look at next slide um, there is a lawn mower here and um, this comes from an article I saw that says that um, photovoltaic installations um, can pollute a lot less and uh, be much cheaper to operate if you regularly mow uh, the low the, the grass underneath them uh, but that is uh, something that is affordable only with robotics lawn mowers remotely operated so this is another example of open hardware that would do a lot, a lot of good if it were developed and uh, uh, produced uh, uh, as we already produce Linux, Apache, and so on. And uh, even more so, uh, next slide, for medical devices. There are already plenty of medical devices that are developed as open hardware uh, like cardiac uh, monitors, uh, prosthetics, uh, eye surgery equipment, and many of these come from India already, but they are still uh, um, experiments, so to speak. They have not reached uh, um, enough scale, but just think what the India, or of course the whole world, would be like if uh, uh, people and uh, hackers and makers uh, worked together as they already do with the uh, open source software to develop and service collaboratively those kinds of devices they would improve enormously the life of millions of people very very quickly so this is my again this is my point open hardware is the way to not follow blindly the absurd high-tech model of western countries but to do real good because it, you can only do it with open hardware and even for very basic needs if you look at the um, uh, next slide and i'm almost finished um this is this uh, Star Wars uh, slide is the the part that I found most fascinating in the movies in those movies uh, we have even very very poor people because the the main character in the, in the screenshot below is a slave uh, you have very very poor people who have access to very advanced digital technology like robotics and they can use it for advance their lives in many ways starting from agriculture okay this is what really fascinates me in uh, visions like star wars not the spaceships or uh, the the jd war swords um next slide again and the, the, this uh, again the star wars shows us a world where even um, normal farmers can improve their lives and work better using 
digital technology and of course if it is open hardware technology for uh, drones that monitor crops uh, for greenhouses for watering systems and uh, countless other applications open hardware if it just does not follow the the hype from uh, western countries can do a huge lot of good um so next slide and i'm basically finished uh, free this is what, what i propose as the mission and the place in society of uh, uh, free as in freedom hardware it is not technology it's a, a social cultural phenomenon it is a human rights issue because it is a tool that can really improve really concretely quickly improve people lives it can increase both individual and community and country freedom because it uh, reduces lock-in okay uh, as long as it is used to to not uh, mirror to not replicate the mistakes already done in other places and as long as it is uh, supported by civic actions to reform laws uh, so that it that laws facilitate and promote usage of open hardware because the problem in the world we do not need uh, uh, more technology technology is great it is extremely cool but the technology that is needed to solve real serious problems already exists what we need is not more advanced technology is more advanced social and legal structures to use it for good and again this is possible only if that technology when it comes to manufacturing things is open hardware and um, last slide let me repeat again that i really feel that we are all in this together that that uh, world map in the in the last slide is uh, uh, i know it is hard to to read but what it basically says is that we must work together reach a global critical mass together to share open hard open source software and open hardware solutions uh, to so that everybody can use them to solve their own local problems not problems invented abroad and uh, uh, so that um, everybody can learn especially western countries everybody can learn about better usage of technology and everybody can use and uh, adapt technology without uh, repeating uh, certain errors and falling after certain excesses and um, so yeah this is what i wanted to to share with you i, I hope that i uh, made the the message clear uh, so i am going to repeat one last time in uh, two sentences and then uh, try to answer your questions open hardware is the next step after free as in freedom software is the same thing applied to material objects and uh, basic activities from agriculture to medicine that can and must really improve um, life for everybody now and the reason is that it is the best way we have to use technology to use and develop technology that matters that solves concrete problems thank you and in the next slide you find all my contact info and uh, and uh, to to continue this discourse because i really hope we can uh, 
continue to reason and work on this together. Thanks. We will now be moving on to the Q&A session. If anyone has have any questions. Great. Thanks. How far along is fabrication technologies? Like well, when you say open source fridges and stuff like that, uh, manufacturing an open source fridge, there are multiple components to 3D print it or something like that, to fabricate it at a remote area which has minimal resources. How, how long do you think it will take? Uh, so the, the question is, uh, if I understand correctly, about how we will get uh, to the point where uh, fabrication uh, with this technology becomes actually affordable and accessible. Is that the question? And and how far are we from that? And, and how far are we from that? Okay. Uh, my mm, my view on this is that we uh, already have all uh, almost uh, all the technology that is needed to do things uh, um, in the right way. But uh, this is uh, the, the point. What is the right way? Because if the goal is to um, continue the same model uh, we have today of very, very cheap products that are made to order to not be repairable and to not last then we have already lost because uh, open hardware and do-it-yourself uh, production in fab labs in my opinion cannot uh, beat uh, mass production at the assembly line okay we cannot win that battle open hardware if you look again at that slide with the washer machine uh, open hardware wins if you do things differently if you say i will not buy any more mass produced uh, washers or any other product i will buy or make only products that are built to last a lifetime and be really repairable. If you um, go in that want to go in that direction, you can uh, um, avoid the problems we have today, uh, but only in that way. You cannot beat um, the the corporations doing the same products. Another example. Um, you ca if the goal is to make uh, a smartphone that looks as good and shiny as the iPhone, then I believe it is almost impossible to do it uh, differently from the way Apple does it with uh, mass manufacturing, very low wages in China. No way try to out to compete with that with uh, fab labs and you lose what you can and what we can and should do is to start uh, demanding smartphones that are maybe not as beautiful and as cool as the iphone but can last 15 years because in that way we pollute much less, but above all, we we are not dependent, lo not locked in to one corporation, and we save a lot of money in the end. But of course, a phone that is built to be designed, sorry, to be repairable and last 15 years is a phone that is uglier than the iPhone. 
no question and uh, can and probably cost just a bit less than the iphone but it lasts 10 times as much because you only put open source software in it and you make it modular same for any other product so the answer is we are very close to do things the right way but the right way is not the current way in my opinion i had a personal question uh, so when you talk about open hardware you're talking about open hardware design right because unlike software uh, right it be, i mean uh, hardware it might be difficult to it might actually cost money to replicate hardware but it might be negligible to replicate software of course and this is okay this is uh, a hot field of study for both me personally and the free knowledge institute of which i am a member in this period and uh, um, the again the final uh, the the what we continue to to find is what i just said uh, it, since uh, physical objects are not like software they cannot be replicated they can they make sense and they can uh, solve many political and economical problems um, if we do different objects so if we do as uh, few objects as possible in order to make a good living and i mean a good living okay i do not mean living in poverty but this is possible again only if we um if we design the right objects open hardware makes sense because in that context you can produce as little objects as possible as few objects as possible as modular as possible and and um, in that if, if you look at if you go for that model instead of assembly line uh, mass production then the the problem of the, the costs of uh, making many copies of a physical products take a whole different um, meaning and are much easier to solve or they matter much less in a way Uh, so uh, you, uh, so I, I sort of got the idea that um, you were saying that ad advances in 5G and uh, automotive, uh, s uh, sort of autonomous driving, uh, is not uh, very fruitful for us. But uh, I mean, like, uh, why is it not as important as uh, so sort of the advancements that you were telling us? Why is it not important for you know safer cars and 5G? Why is not that not just as important as uh, the kinds of things that you were telling us? Um, okay, big question. <laughs> um, my my point is that um, I I look at this from the point of view of um, uh, human rights and uh, equal opportunities and social stability um uh, what we see is that uh, uh what uh, many what the majority of people right now even even in first world countries even in uh, first world cities needs is uh, um guaranteed access uh, affordable access at least to uh, water energy um, quality food and uh, uh, public transportation um, things like uh, 5g networks are going to um, are going to uh, divert to to consume 
a lot of money, attention, time, and resources on uh, um, on something that is not going to that is going to make a concrete difference in the next 10 or 15 years at least only for a little minority of uh, affluent people inside advanced urban centers not for everybody else so in that sense i think it's less important uh, autonomous cars um uh, I, I i i've been in uh, in delhi and in Mumbai, and uh, I've been uh, in, uh, in Trivandrum, and I've been in uh, Rome and many European and American cities. If we all had autonomous cars tomorrow, and they were not polluting, um, we would have the same, we would have less accidents, which is, of course, uh, wonderful, but we would have the same waste of time and same low quality of life that we have today because inside big cities where 70 80 percent of people will live in the next decades inside big cities there is no space for uh, personal cars it does not matter at all if they are driverless or if they are hydrogen powered. It does not change the fact that there is no space to make all that car move and above all to park them when they are not moving. So this is why I say that I, this is one of the reasons why I believe that autonomous cars are extremely cool of course they are cool but they are very very uh, superfluous what what i would like to see is uh, at least for cities efficient uh, public transportation and uh, it may make sense to make public buses driverless maybe so that would be a development a kind of progress worth investing in my opinion but since the private car is doomed again in my opinion because of lack of space uh, or the fact that uh, uh, for example in western countries we see uh, young people much much less interested in driving or in owning a car than uh, we were when we were in our 20s when i uh, got of age my first very first wish was to get my driver's license and everybody every of my friends all my friends were the same they my son and most of uh, his friends they do not care at all of having a driver's license they they see very very little value in it more of a burden so that's again is why i saying why i'm saying let's not waste so much money and effort in this stuff technology is just one part of the parcel and not even the biggest uh, let me thank you once more for this opportunity and uh, let me repeat that i am extremely interested in uh, feedback from all of you and in getting in touch with uh, whoever is uh, investigating these uh, topics uh, from this uh, angle in india or everywhere else for that matter so i really really look forward to hear from all of you again and please share this invitation thanks again and have a nice evening